Are you thinking about buying a control paddle racket? Do you know what allows a racket to have more control than another? It is possible to have at the same time control and power in a paddle racket? I'm gonna answer these questions in this video, so vamos! Hello to all players, I'm Pablo and I welcome you to a new four set. Almost every paddle player looks for control when buying a paddle racket. But what exactly is control in a paddle racket? We can define control as the ability of the racket to transmit our shot as realistically as possible. Using other words, how well you are able to move the ball where you want on command. The less our racket is involved in the shot, the more control we have. And now we are gonna understand why. Control in a paddle racket is super important because it has to do with your ability to place the ball where you intended to. And it's not only about winning every point, but also your confidence in your shots. If you are playing with a racket that doesn't produce enough control, your confidence in each shot can dip drastically. But what gives control to a paddle racket? As I said before, if we want to have control in a paddle racket, we need to look for rackets that transmit our shot in the most realistic way possible. And all these have to be with harness of stiffness of paddle rackets. Generally speaking, the stiffer the racket, the more control it will have. And the two main points regarding hardness or stiffness are the rubber and the fibers. To have greater stiffness, we need to look for a racket that uses a hard rubber, a rubber with high density. This is the main factor to take it into account to have the best possible control racket. If this video is helping you as a paddle player, please consider to subscribe because it helps me a lot. Hard rubbers have less ball output than soft rubbers. Imagine that you need 10 units of force to hit the ball and place it wherever you want in the court. The ball output in a paddle racket will add X units of force so you will have to provide the remaining force. However, in a paddle racket with a very low ball output, you will have to apply all the force that the ball needs. So in this case, it will depend on whether you have the technique and precision or not. Together with the rubber comes the fibers. The stiffer the fibers use, the more control we will have in our paddle racket. Nevertheless, always remember that reducing the ball output, we will need always more effort from our side to move the ball. And in certain situations and depending on our technique, it can penalize us more than helps. The stiffer fibers we have available on the market are always fiber carbon. The higher the K of the fiber carbon is, the stiffer it should be. For example, in Agustin Tapia's racket, he has two different options. The 8010-12K and the 8010-18K. So in this case, the 18K is a little bit stiffer compared to the 12K. So if you are looking for control in a paddle racket, always try to choose the one with the less ball output possible because your racket won't help you and it's all in your hands. There are other things in a paddle racket that can help us to get more control. And the first one is the balance. The lower the balance of our racket, the closer to the hand we will have the feeling of hitting. And at the same time, the lower the balance, the higher mobility we will have. To give you an example, imagine hitting a ball with a one meter long paddle racket. We will be hitting the ball too far from us and the feelings would be not the best. With a low balance racket, we get better mobility, which is a very important factor when it comes to feeling comfortable hitting the ball. The round paddle rackets are usually those with a lower balance and greater mobility. And the diamond shaped rackets are usually those with the highest balance and worst mobility. The second aspect to have in mind is the sweet spot. The larger the sweet spot area, the better the feelings and the response of our paddle racket. As with a low balance, round paddle rackets generally have a wider sweet spot area than a diamond paddle racket. The hardness, the materials, the balance and the sweet spot are key factors to have more control in a paddle racket. But is it possible to have at the same time control and power in a paddle racket? The short answer is yes, for sure. Power and control share most of the things we saw before. The only difference would be related to the balance. If we are looking for a power racket, the higher the balance, the better it will be. You will lose mobility, but at the same time you will gain power. And if we think about pro players experts in control, what kind of rackets do they use? Let's think about Sanjo Gutierrez, for example. He's one of the best players in terms of control and precision, but he's not using a round low balance racket. 
Sometimes when you are good at doing something, or in this case, if Sanjo is good in control, he has two options. First, look for a racket that maximizes his strengths, or second, look for a racket that improves his weaknesses. He has decided to choose the second one and that is why he uses a teardrop safe racket. But yes, his racket is one of the hardest rackets of any other pro player. Another example could be Alex Ruiz. He is a super power oriented player but he uses a round adidas racket. Using that adidas, he gains lower balance and mobility but as the racket is super hard, he can smash and get the most from his racket anytime. So generally speaking, the perfect control paddle racket would be something like this. A round shape racket with a hard rubber, stiff fibers, using fiber carbon and with a low balance that will maximize our feelings of control. Please leave in the comments any doubt you have and I will try to answer every one of them. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye!